minimize your day length. I don't know what the exact numbers Look, were. Look, um, law really number 75. And um, as you saw, a mommy out there. We're at the park now. Better positioning. And that's mommy on. There's some tan. There's some tannins right there. Obviously, didn't mean much because the Confederates lost the campaign. They won this battle. There's another mommy. They lost the campaign. Overall, I'll be filming a little bit. But look at this map. Pushed out of northern Georgia and we're essentially back, pushed back towards Atlanta. You can think. Essentially, it's all the Union on this side, oh. all the Confederates. So that's gonna be a, we're not we're it from here, down but the center portion where the I was on a film, but then he just finished. We have no, isn't three stops, two more because we already had, we already had. I was back to film, but then he finished. Um, so we'll see some where to put the things there. So too, we have two more stops, and yeah, mm -hmm. you let me know down and below so I didn't say hi. Fifteen minutes to say good idea. Because that's exactly right now. Let's learn some history. Peace. Peace. Now, we have seen all this, uh, we've seen all these monuments and markers, and you know, just like you're seeing that here. Uh, now, I want you to notice the absence of it. I think this is so fluid, so quick, and just everybody's just, you know. And it's kind of weird, too. You. you I'll tell you what I'm talking about here in a minute when we get to Snodgrass Hill. I think this is happening so fast, even the Confederates. The only thing they can see is just what's right here in front of them. They, don't, they can't do this. They're not looking at each side. They're just they're pushing these soldiers back. They said, you know, like I say, the Union right here kind of just it basically dissolves very quickly. But these other guys are going to, they said some of these guys here, the Union guys, are just going to throw the packs down and drive them down. As they can go. So as we travel, you're not going to see a lot of monuments. You, uh, across that road over there, you're going to see about four or five of these little monuments. Monuments not much bigger than that Illinois monument there. You will see the uh, South Carolina State Monument up on the hill. Uh, but one of the things I want you to, you'll see two fingerboards if you, if you notice them. Uh, one will say to the spot where a foot was wounded. And he shot the leg. That leg eventually had to come off. But on up, just to the north of that, though, you'll see another little fingerboard, and it says to the place where nine Union guns were captured. Guns meaning cannons. And if you lose nine guns like that, you're having a bad, bad, bad day. That right there is the one sign that, you know, that tells it all. Uh, but then we're going to go up to Snodgrass Hill, and when we pull up on the hill there, you're going to go, <clears throat> man, there's all kinds of monuments up there. So when we leave here, like I say, just kind of think about yourself being one of these soldiers, either side, but the, the distance that we're going to travel from here back over to Snodgrass Hill. I mean, if you're running for your life, that's a pretty good little little hike, but I guarantee you, you're going to be covering it pretty quick. So, big little hole still. You got from here back over there to Tour Stop 2, a hole. Uh, Thomas knows that hole is there, so he is, you know, and here they are. They are going to withstand 25 Confederate attacks from this, you know, from right here, you know, heading this way that afternoon. Uh, Thomas is trying to stay in contact with those men over there. Uh, he is kind of riding back and forth trying to get a stage withdrawal set up. Uh, later that, that evening, he's... You know, I, I'm sure it's probably a, a lot more open to the north there than what you see now. But he will actually see another one of these dust clouds riding his way very rapidly. And that is the point that he just about goes into a, a, a fit, basically. He just about has a nervous breakdown because he doesn't know who that is. What he's thinking, what he may be thinking that it is, is he thinks it may be Nathan Bedford Forrest and his Confederate cavalry has slipped in that hole, and now here he is coming in behind him. So here he is with all Last these stop. Confederates in the front They're attacking. Now he may have you know, cavalry behind, so he's fixing to be the peanut butter between these two slices of bread. It's not. It's not uh, Forrest. Basically, it is a fellow that I guess he would have probably kissed at the time if he could have got to him. Gordon Granger and his reserve corps is coming. Now, they had been up about 
eh, probably four miles as the crow flies above the, the visitor center there, about where Lake Winnipesoka is today. Uh, Granger knows that the sound of the guns are not sounding or in the direction that they're going is not right. So he comes riding to uh, basically Thomas's rescue and he will be here uh, just in time because Thomas's men are just about to run out of ammunition and it's just before dark. So I always say, Gordon Granger in the dark actually is what saves Thomas here on this battlefield. But now, you know, I put a lot of emphasis on dark. If you were here in 1863 and it got dark, it was dark. Now, I say that because if we were standing here tonight, in this same place, looking towards Chattanooga, that whole sky would be lit up kind of orange looking because of all that uh, light pollution, you know. Uh, but they didn't have that back then. Uh, at the end of this thing, uh, Lowell Street sends word back to Bragg saying, you know, the enemy before me has disappeared. And then Bragg says, press it. You know, Lowell Street says, no. You know, we talked about that insubordination, you know, there's your prime example. He said, let's wait until the morning and we'll see where this army has gone. I think they pretty well had a good idea where this army had gone because there's nothing above this except basically Chattanooga. So they will actually wait until the next morning and Forrest and his cavalry follows this carnage back through uh, Rossville Gap and the Carlin Gap. Now they know that the enemy is there in Chattanooga. So this is where you get into that uh, discussion that could uh, go kind of either way, uh, was Chickamauga actually a Confederate victory or not? Because the prize of the fight is Chattanooga. And at the end So, boat down right there. It's pretty, you, you can see pretty far out. Probably not seven states, but of course we're near Georgia, Alabama. Because we're not going to Alabama. I believe we might be in Georgia. Because sometimes the GPS says, welcome to Georgia, which it did yesterday. And it, and it did it, did it, Saturday to Tennessee, and then, ye and then yesterday to Georgia. So yeah, and right now, they, well they did, or it's down there now. They had a tour, so the tour I was standing right there, all the people, and now it's down there. Well, <laughs> that was a, I hit a button. If you hit a button, I, I think I hit the, hit the, the Press the button so the camera will go to the menu that all the has all the clips on. And that means it's that this clip. But I wasn't in the middle of a sentence. But sorry about that. Because usually I usually say bye or something. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Well, well, guys, we're on the train now. It's another seven. Got to punch our tickets. If you look to your left in the direction of travel, you'll see what appears to be a gravel road. This is where the original 1858 East Tennessee and Georgia track line would have been. The line was raised to its current We're position in, the in 1915 due to the flooding in the, the early 1900s. And in just a few moments, you'll see a tree with a yellow line marker indicating how high the floodwaters would have gotten during the Great Flood of 1867 at about 9 feet above ground level. So, yeah. We're going to go six miles down the trip. When we get to the end, we're going to East Chattanooga Station. Or depot, the six miles round trip, so it's three each way, I believe. Six miles round trip, three each way. Four bridges, one tunnel. Four bridges, one tunnel. And when we get to the other station, the engine's going on turntable. And here's a tree. But as I was saying, it's four bridges, one tunnel. Six miles down trip three each way. And when we get to the East Chattanooga station, uh, the engine goes on a turntable so it can turn around so you can go back. And yeah, that's 
your bed with you in a little bit. Peace. The windows that open all the way up, please keep everything inside the car. now. At the turntable. Well, it did often load the motors on a turn around. And yeah. Right, the turntable. Going this way. That moves with the turntable. The Vendetta's control on it. Two rods. This rod and the last rod. And it stopped. Created Russell Cave. Hmm. We're at the thin now. Yes. What is the thing? Read it. Ruby Falls? No, Ruby Falls. Come on. Uh, the cave, Al. Russell Cave in Ru Russell what Cave state? in uh, Alabama. We went to Alabama, so since I'm in it now, oh, me and Mom, because that's new one on the list. Put it down. And this is the central, by the way. Oh, and then uh, the water, because it's underground, made it do that. And be quiet. And that's central, you can tell. The water, all the limestone, there's rocks, all that stuff. 
The T is actually this, that way. And we're going to go back there right now. Uh, apparently we are. That's going to be it from this. We're at the cave now. Actually, we went one time and filmed it and we went back. So, and there's, no, never mind. There's, we, we took this all the way in there. But it barely goes in there. And there's water you can hear. It's, that's how the sinkhole happened because there's underground water. Water's right and it goes in the t that cave and the roof collapsed that that's why there's uh, screws on uh, the edge of the wall on the what on over there over here I think they no one can go in there it's really it's so up high you can't can't really go in there it's just high, you can't really jump down from here, you can't. And... Yep. So, yeah, and pretty much in there is just some inter information. But in there, uh, it's five miles of caves, but some, uh, some places you might not even be, you can't even stand. And there's... There's screws on that wall, so it wouldn't collapse because it did collapse. Over here, they decided not to do it because they just decided to do one, not both. Some places you might, you can't even, you might have to crawl. Because remember, Native Americans, the earliest ones before Jesus, came here 10,000 years ago. 10,000. Big number. Five digit number. Five digit number. And yeah, I have my case, so it's kind of hard. And yeah, peace. I don't know. And I'll show you back with you in a little bit. Peace. Well, guys, it's later in the day now. I think I remember saying that in a few vlogs ago, but we're, we just went up a mountain. It was, it's a good view, but I decided not to film just because I probably just vlogged it in super, probably at like 15 minutes, so. What's yeah. mountain? Yeah, what was the name of the mountain? The, Tennessee Mountain. It's on this water bottle. I have it. A little story on this. Here? And what there was a battle. Here? Enough. There, there was a battle here. It's continued a battle from Chattanooga to the Union and the Confederates. And we're on your way. We're on our our way. Stop. We're on your way to Centrus Park for the tour. In about an hour, my ears are popped. Uh, then I last till around three, and then, and then we're and then we're all in our hotel, and then the dance at seven thirty. Be at at Central's part, they moved the game back like half an hour when they're at home. When the Braves have a home game, and yeah, I'll check back with you in a little bit. Uh, and yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm gonna be very bad. Have a seat for a minute. We're not supposed to do this on game day, but have a seat real quick. We're going we're gonna to go over some things real quick. Thank you. This the press box. Okay. Sit in right here. I'm supposed to sit right here. She just said I said in the Yeah. I've been here for years. Yeah. 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 Sit in my right. Gosh, when you came in. The uh, pictures on the wall, those were our famous Hall of Fame broadcasters that That's are no longer guide. with us. Uh, Skip Carey, son of a very famous Harry Carey baseball broadcasting family. Uh, Ernie Johnson Sr., he actually played for the Milwaukee Braves for 15 seasons right and was a broadcaster 35 years plus. And Pete Van Weeren, the professor who we named this press box after. And those guys were Hall of Fame broadcasters. These windows do open because the broadcasters like them open for the windy hill breeze coming through here. They're not open right now because they're not here. But let's take a, uh, also you see the TVs over your head, the Braves partner with Panasonic. We don't want you to miss a ball game. We have over 1,200 televisions in the stadium and 31 LED screens. But unless you're in the bathroom, you should be able to see a ball game, <laughs> period. All right, starting at your left, the red numbers hanging up. 
on the field out there. Mm -hmm. on the wall, those are the 10 retired Brave numbers. Those jerseys will not be worn again. Where? Number three was Dale Murphy, most popular Brave in the 80s. He won back-to-back -back MVP awards in 82 and 83. He also won four back-to-back -back Silver Slugger awards. And Dale Murphy is the only Brave that will retire Brave that is not going into Hall of Fame Cooperstown. He missed out on the vote, and the veterans did not vote him in either, and that was a crying shame. Uh, Dale Murphy does have a restaurant right across the street at the Galleria. You can walk over there in five minutes called Murph's, and he frequents that often. It's a great restaurant. Number six, of course, Bobby Cox, our longstanding manager we have forever. He is the winningest manager in Braves history. He is the fourth winningest manager overall in Major League history. But Bobby holds a distinct record that nobody else holds. Nobody knows. Oh, he got ejected right more times than any other manager in baseball because mm -hmm. he had his players yeah. back. That's Number it. 10, Corsair and Andrew had 10. We've always been good at that. Across the hall are all the Braves and Braves Hall of Fame. Y'all can come on. We have the championship trophies and the World Series trophy as well. last year. The statue that we had at Turner Field is still there and it is not Turner Field any longer. It is the Georgia State University football stadium and they have done quite well there. They played their first season there last year and so that statue will remain there. This is a display of 755 Henry Aaron Louisville Slender Bats commemorated for 755 total home runs that Hank did his career. And during the ball game, this audio video runs, and thank you so you can actually hear it. The story of his life, he was a young man, born in Lower Alabama to a large family. And by the time he was 14, he knew he wanted to be a pro baseball player because he idolized Jackie Robinson. He signed his first pro contract with the Braves at age 19. $10,000. Well, that was a lot of money for a kid 19 years old back then, but what did that not buy him here? He still could not eat at a restaurant with his white teammates or stay at the same hotel because we were very racially. He stayed at Boston Braves. And it was colored and white. But thank God that Hank Aaron hung in there. The closer he got to breaking Bay Boots record, the more death threats he and his family got. These were real threats. But he managed to survive it. He hit that home run, so thank God it's over. Today, Hank Aaron is the senior vice president of the Braves. He's still with his foundation work, and we get, we get to see a smile on his face once in a while. He's actually here today. Or... No, thank this way. 60 people to rent this to a maximum of 90. That brings you about 100, 110. We're below the shop. Overall, we'll start feeding you an hour. I feel in my day, field. Up until an hour after the first pitch. So if you get hungry after that, just walk up the stairs, order something from the chop house, or go out to one of the vendors. You got your own bathrooms here. This is a great place to cheer up our right fielder, Nick Marcakis. It's also a great place to help Bryce Harper drop the ball. <laughs> now the outside seats up there and then these are starting to come on. The super cold cup holders, by the time the game gets here, the frost will be coming out of them and they'll stay that way probably until tomorrow. They keep your beverage cold the whole game. We always have USB ports so you don't run out of social media. We have more great artwork on the back wall. Our most iconic outfielders, they are Murphy, Hank Aaron, Andrew Jones, and Vega Justice, and we pencil in the starters every night before we play. And then, for those who are interested, we have two old lockers here around the corner of Murphy and Aaron that you might be interested in taking a peek at.
two players uh, running. Well, some players. They do a lot of Well, guys, um, I'm in the hotel room, and look at this view, guys. Uh, look at this. Field right there. Man. And that's a chop house date, and it opens two hours early. The chop house date's open at 5.30, it's the game's at 7.30, and every other day it opens at 6. It's the right field where we enter the tour, and there's no one there. And either way, it's better to go in here because then you have some better bets. You can see how many fans are already there. And you can cross by going across there because they have a metal detector right there. There. So we're watching banner practice right now. Right now, it's just the Blue Jays about, are about to hit. It's about five. Whoa, my goldfish almost fell. Or it did, and then it landed. But uh, you can see there's some. Tarf or turf, tarf, and then there's someone one one family left, but that's pretty much it. And, and um, yeah, it's cool. We're in this hotel right next to that Comcast building, and there's the A, and then there's the Apple. We're in the Battery. This is a great hotel, but it's very expensive per night. Uh, I can, I can tell you that. I can tell you that. It's a lot of cash. <laughs> a lot of money. And, yeah. And that's pretty much it. Let's hit the game on. Blue Jays versus the Braves at Central Park. Well, it's six to nothing. And it's a two outs in the middle of the set, and the starter's out. You only want one and two-thirds innings. Half a dozen runs in the bottom of the set of innings. Oh, man. After every hit, they do the chop. Oh, 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 Ice cream, and here's a chop. I don't do the batter, I guess. See if I can get your own run. It's on the fly, I'm not doing it five bucks. I have my camera case in my lap. I just let it drop. I don't know. I don't know how I'm just to catch a home run with this camera case like this. It was easier to film in Chattanooga. It's gonna be hard. That's a ball. I have to put you on the ground. That's behind him, I think. Or you might see like camera angle of nothing, like when I put it to the side.
over there. Yes, Susie, but I'll ask. Seven nothing. Mom sits. Now it's Freeman. No, not gone. Oh man, turned into a yard here. I'm ready. Oh, sorry. your dad one last time is it's a tradition I don't want to talk about but one thing I don't talk about is it's bad and sorry I just I got up at 4 a.m. and that's eastern time so it's really 3 a.m. this time it's Atlanta is in a eastern time then is I don't know if this is if this is common but when I woke up at 4 a.m. the lights were still on we didn't have a game today, and probably the, the workers wanted to power wash the full concrete when it wasn't humid out. So that's probably why they did that. Because there were still employees. I counted like 10, and there was still a lot of lights on. The contrast building, the stadium. The lights were dim, though. They were not at full power like they are during the game. And yeah. If you like this vlog, give it a thumbs up. If you have the subscribe button, subscribe button. It's red. It's down here. And by the way, I don't know. I'm only posting the vlogs. I don't know about today. The day I'm coming back on the trip because I'm, I just don't feel like doing it. And know I am gonna see you. And make sure to hit the bell, like this video, subscribe, hit the share, and hit the bell. And you know I am gonna see you in vlog number seventy. Or no, set. Seventy sits lot on and peace. I got this in Atlanta. The general one caught a home run and when BP was done or right when it was right as right as the Blue Jays were going out the field, he taught I turned around and then he he was like pointing at me and he threw the ball. Threw me the ball. One day in street. I don't know how many major league baseballs I have. I do talent from my base. I do talent baseballs from other people. Some people don't, but I do. So yeah. Oh yeah. Also, uh, this is part of the vlog. It's actually 
was probably one of the, I don't know where I'll put this, I'm probably going to put it before the close.